Hello, Familia. Glory be to God for another beautiful day. This is our daily bread, part two. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Um, I'm just really grateful for all the wonderful scripture he has given us today. Now, granted, the whole Bible is great. I just, I'm learning to appreciate it more and more every day. Like, even today, once my mind is a little bit more prepared for it. I'm actually really excited for some of the things that he was pointing me at, pointing out today. Out of a rap song, by the way, y'all. <laughs> Glory be to God for rap music that takes me way deeper into the Bible. <laughs> like, that's a mind blower for me, Familia, and so I'm really grateful and I look forward to what God has for us, because I I'm sure I'll share <laughs> whatever um, He shows me in that. Um, it was uh, in regards to uh, Ichabod, you know, the glory of God has left. You know, um, and I talked about how you know, like Samson, you know, he thought, oh, you know, here I go, I'm just gonna get free again, and and he didn't realize that Adam and I had left him, and so I was just like, ooh. Yeah, let's, let's go a little deeper on that. So, nice little nugget in there for y'all to maybe go discover for yourself what God has for you in the meantime. Hallelujah and amen. We're going to start with Romans chapter 6. It says this, What should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. For if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Glory be to God. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. Glory be to God. I was just talking to a brother about this too. <laughs> I was talking about how, you know, the things that we do wrong and, you know, our sins and transgressions and iniquities and all those things have been nailed to the execution stake. Blotted out forever. Glory be to God. Hallelujah and amen. Let it be so, Abba Father. The old self was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin since a person who has died is free from sin's claims. Hallelujah. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For in light of the fact that he died, he died to sin once for all. Once for all. But in light of the fact that he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its desires. And do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you, because you are not under law, but under grace. We are no longer under the law, Familia. When our, when we believe that it, you know our sins and transgressions and everything is covered by the blood of Jesus and, and has been nailed to the execution stake and has died along with him, glory be to God, we get to rise and live with him. Hallelujah. From slaves of sin to slaves of God. Hallelujah and amen. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Absolutely not. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. 
But thank God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching you were transferred to. And having been liberated from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. I'm using a human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh, all of our flesh. For just as you offer the parts of yourselves as slaves to moral impurity and to greater and greater lawlessness, so now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which results in sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from allegiance to righteousness. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been liberated from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification. And the end is eternal life. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's a free gift, Amelia. Yes, we have to die to ourselves, but we have to die to our ugly, gross selves that are against God. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yes and amen. Let it be so, Abba Father. We don't we don't want to keep living in our icky flesh. And we want to you know be taught the ways that our flesh control us. It's not easy to look at, Amelia. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not great to look at, at the things that God is telling us we do awful especially the deeper you get into it because and the more you learn and, and the more he teaches you how to be and, and then you go back and you're just like disgusted with yourself because you're just like so it doesn't get easier to look at except it does at the exact same time if that's going to make any sense and the reason is is because you can rest in that you can rest in the fact that that makes you an, a legitimate child you know, because if we're not disciplined by the Lord, we're not, you know, um, legitimate children. And so it just helps me remember that, okay, you still care enough to point it out to me, Father God. And so that gives me joy, you know, um, in the painful things that we have to look at and the things that we do. Because for me, I'm impatient. And um, I quite frankly... <laughs> none of the lists of hardships that keep just piling on me. But at the exact same time, I'm grateful because it's keeping my heart soft <laughs> towards God, which is the most important thing. And he's not letting me harden it towards him. And I'm grateful for that. Um, because he knows that's not the desire of my heart. He knows that I want to follow him and that I desperately want, you know, to follow him in all his ways and show others and to help others. Um, and that my suffering can be used for him and his glory and his kingdom. Yes and amen, Abba Father. <laughs> Our next scripture is Hebrews chapter 13. It says this, let brotherly love continue. Don't neglect to show hospitality. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Remember the prisoners as though you were in prison with them, and the mistreated as though you yourselves were suffering bodily. Marriage must, all, must be respected by all, and the marriage bed kept undefiled, because God will judge immoral people and adulterers. And he's also talking about our marriage bed with God, too, you know, keeping him first because we are his bride as the church so he's not just talking about the marriage that we have with another person he's talking about the marriage we have first with god i believe that's why paul recommends we stay single i, I believe that because it just it just makes it easier <laughs> to put him first continuing it says this since your life should be free from the love of money be satisfied with what you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And that is in um, 
Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 6. And that's another thing that I have to remember. And it was a really beautiful blessing to, to see this word today as well. Because I also um, struggle to be consistently satisfied with what I have and to be content with what I have. But he is teaching me and I'm grateful that he's still teaching me. Because... <laughs> You know, again, it's just another way that he's showing me that he cares and that he, you know, wants me to get better and he wants me to grow. Continuing verse 6, it says, Therefore we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? And that's in Psalm chapter 118, verse 6. Glory be to God. We do not have to fear man. We must fear God. But he's also our helper. Whereas man... You know, it says in Psalms also that human help is worthless. And it's true because if there's no God backing it up, it truly is. It's just the way it is. It's a sad, true fact that we, you know, rely on the charity of ourselves when if we were to do it God's way, it would be so much better. And that's me too, by the way. We are in this together learning. Abba Father, teach us. Verse 7, remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you as you carefully observe the outcome of their lives. Imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be led astray by various kinds of teaching, strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by grace and not by foods, since those involved in them have not benefited. We have an altar. I just wanted to let that sink in for a second. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle do not have a right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the most holy place by the high priest as a sin offering are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp bearing his disgrace <laughs> glory be to god for we do not have an enduring city here familiar we don't instead we seek the one to come therefore through him let us continually offer up to god a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips that confess his name it's the natural pr product of lips that confess his name is to continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. And it's a sacrifice of praise because life isn't always easy. I can still say praise, yeah, Adonai. I can say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah with all sincerity in my heart as I suffer because he's worthy of it. He's worthy because we quite frankly, don't deserve anything. Nothing. We deserve nothing. <laughs> well, okay, forgive me. No, 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 We deserve the execution stake. But as far as good stuff, we don't deserve any of it. Because we are hostile towards God until God indwells within us and, and makes it possible for us to be reconciled. And that only happened by the shedding of the blood of Messiah Yeshua because he was the perfect sacrifice. Bless you, Abba Father. Bless you, Abba Father. Oh, our God's good. Bless him. Bless him with me, Familia. Don't neglect to do what is good and to share. For God is pleased with such sacrifices. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so that they can do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are convinced that we have a clear conscience, wanting to conduct ourselves honorably in everything. And I especially urge you to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of Shalom, who brought up from the dead, our Lord Yeshua, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with all that is good to do his will. 
working in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. Glory belongs to him forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and amen. Brothers, I urge you to receive this message of exhortation. For I have written to you briefly. Be aware that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon enough, he will be with me when I see you. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those who are from Italy greet you. Grace be with all of you. I, I bless the Lord for the endings of Paul's letters. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13 is the next scripture that I have for you today. This is this. A little too far. So this is, you know, all the words we're obviously reading are Lord Yeshua's because, you know, he's also the word. And they come from God the Father, of course. But this is, you know, his words while he was here on earth as both perfect God and perfect man. Hallelujah and amen. On that day, Yeshua went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. While the whole crowd stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, Consider the sower who went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much soil, and they sprang up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, when the sun came up, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. Still others fell on good ground and produced a crop, some one hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times what was sown. Anyone who has ears should listen. Hallelujah and amen. Help us, Father. Then the disciples came up and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, Because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given for you to know, but it has not been given to them. For whoever has, more will be given to him, and he will have more than enough. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. For this reason I speak to them in parables, because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You will listen and listen, yet never understand, and you will look and look, yet never perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. Otherwise, they might, might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I would cure them. Lord be to God. That's in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Yeah, it's, we can have all kinds of Bible knowledge up here. It's got to be here. It has to be here. Lord, help us keep it here. In the mighty name of Jesus it says, but your eyes are blessed. Because they do see, and your eyes, or in your ears, rather, sorry, <laughs> because they do hear. For I assure you, many prophets and righteous people long to see the things you see, yet didn't see them. To hear the things you hear, yet didn't hear them. You then, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one sown along the path. And the one sown on rocky ground, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but is short-lived. When pressure or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now the one sown among the thorns, Lancelot, don't do it, nine, Please forgive me, <laughs> Amelia. It's my kitty. It's being very naughty. I had to prevent him from being naughty before he <laughs> did the thing. Forgive me, Amelia. Forgive me, Abba Father, more importantly. <laughs> Lord, help us. The pressure or persecution comes because of the word. Immediately he stumbles. Now the one sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, 
But the worries of this age and the seduction of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word, who does bear fruit and yields some 100, some 60, some 30 times what was sown. Yes, hallelujah, amen, Abba Father. He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people were sleeping, his enemy came, sowed weeds among the wheat, and left. When the plants sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds also appeared. The landowner's slaves came to him and said, Master, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Then where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he told them. So do you want us to go and gather them up? The slaves asked him. No, he said, when you gather up the weeds, you might also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and tie them in bundles to burn them. But store the wheat in my barn. Glory be to God for the wheat. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> he presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it's grown, it's taller than the vegetables and becomes a tree so that the birds of the sky come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into 50 pounds of flour until it spread through all of it. Glory, hallelujah, yes and amen. <laughs> Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables, and he would not speak any to, anything to them without a parable, so that what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, or prophet might be fulfilled. Forgive me, it doesn't say Isaiah. I will open my mouth in parables. I will declare things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Glory be to God. That's in Psalm chapter 78 and 2. <laughs> then he dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain the parable of the weeds in the field to us. He replied, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, the adversary. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather from his kingdom everything that causes sin, and those guilty of lawlessness. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone who has ears should listen. Glory be to God. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. I love it. Glory be to God. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in, fine of, in search of fine pearls. When he found one priceless pearl he went and sold everything he had and bought it the kingdom of heaven is priceless familia then the kingdom of heaven is like a large net thrown into the sea it collected every kind of fish and when it was full they dragged it ashore sat down and gathered the good fish into containers but threw out the worthless ones so it will be at the end of the age the angels will go out separate the evil people from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Yes, they told him. Therefore, he said to them, Every student of scripture instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who brings out of his storeroom what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left there went to his hometown and began to teach them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said how did this wisdom and these miracles come to him isn't this the carpenter's son isn't his mother called mary and his brothers james joseph simon and judas and his sisters aren't they all with us so where does he get all these things 
and they were offended by him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his household. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Amelia, I believe that's one of the reasons that we don't have the type of miracles that they did back then. And I actually think I'm going to go ahead and split this into a part three because I'm at 25 minutes already. But that is okay because this is just a lot of good word and I don't want to not share my testimony you know when I hear you know see things that he's pointing out to me and I don't want to cut I don't want to stifle the spirit and so with that said I guess I will go ahead and go on or go ahead and end this video and go on to part three of our daily bread today and just bless the Lord on oh my soul for all the good work um, and bless you, Familia, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that God blesses you to hear his word more and more daily, um, and to hear what he has to say to you specifically and personally and intimately more and more daily. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> Bye, Familia.